guy who goes for the girl he cannot get, and he keeps trying, and he gets his heart jacked. <sighs> What's your favorite movie of this kind of motif? Fitzgerald obviously playing this game. What is your favorite movie that plays the game about where a poor person tries to become a somebody by becoming a wealthy person? And in the text that you write down, ask this simple question, is the theme of love ever there as well? Hmm, very interesting. Of course, we can think of any number of classic stories here about the quest for the impossible. In some ways, this is a rewriting of a story like the Odyssey, isn't it? The hero trying to get back to the one thing that he loves. And of course, when Odysseus finally is reunited with Penelope, it's always the question of, is it the same Penelope? Notice by the end of our story, the Penelope of our story, right, Judy Jones, is no longer what she once was. Stunningly beautiful, free, vivacious, and all of that. Finally, 3B, how do we relate personally to a text like this? Let's ask some questions, first of all, about dreams and goals. I'll ask it, uh, several questions. You can jot these down and decide which one you want to write on. Do you think it's a good idea to have dreams? Is it a good idea to have goals? Or in the end, will creating goals for yourself just lead to your own disappointment? because you're going to fail to meet some of those goals. You're going to fail to meet some of those dreams. A second question. What about it when you fail to achieve a goal? Do you give up? Or do you keep going? Do you keep dreaming? And why is it some people give up so quickly in their life on their dreams, and other people work really hard for a long time to accomplish their dreams? A third question. What about the relationship between these two lovers, if that's what we can call them? Do you think it's the case that oftentimes people call being in love really just mind games, playing with each other's minds, kind of back and forth, almost like playing with a, you know, a string? We think, of course, of that famous balcony scene, don't we, back to 3A, of Romeo and Juliet. When Romeo is going away after the balcony scene and Juliet calls for him and he goes, I'm here. And she says, I would love it if I could have you on a little string the way children catch a little bird and then tie the string to their foot so that they let the bird hop away and then pull it back. And Romeo goes, yeah, yeah, let's do that. I'm happy. I'm totally fine with that. What are your thoughts on this? Why is it some guys have no problem at all being controlled by the girl, but then the girl will break their heart anyway? Smart or dumb at Worland High School, this kind of thing. Of course, the question of a strong woman is outlined in this story, and it kind of was controversial when he wrote the story, because here you have a woman who basically says, don't tell me what to do. I will not be defined by all of these expectations by all these men, and yet she's very confident at manipulating men's feelings and emotions because she is so beautiful and because she is wealthy. Finally, let's ask the question of wealth, especially as it relates to the American dream. Do you think it is the case in our culture that people who have money have more power and therefore have a better life? Is that the case? And are we set up to believe that all it takes is a good education and hard work and you can make all the money and get all the power you want? Is that actually true? How much of that idea has played at all in your own thinking about your life and your future life? Well, there you go. An introduction to F. Scott Fitzgerald and his classic short story, Winter Dreams. Thank you.